Section 3.2, Perfect Squares, Perfect Cubes, and Their Roots. Let's start right here. Let's find the square root of a whole number. So there we've got a radical. Now remember, because it doesn't have an index in it, we assume it is an index of 2. But I want to find out what is the square root of 1,764. Now I know you can just pull out your calculator and figure it out. But this is an exercise in learning how to manipulate a radical. It's helping teach you some skills you'll need to move on. So what I want to see is I want to see you breaking this down by hand. The first step we're going to do is we're going to do a prime factorization of that radicand of 1,764. When I break that down, I've got 2 times 882. I, 2 is a prime number, so I'm going to circle that. 882 I can break down into 2 times 441. 7 times 63. 7 is a prime number. 7 times 9. And 9 is 3 times 3. Now I've got it broken down into its prime factors. I'm going to rewrite it. Notice how when I rewrote it, I grouped it together by its factors. Now I'm going to go back to that index. I've got an index of 2. Or in this case, there's nothing written, so it's an index of 2. So I want to look for groups of 2. I see one group of 2. I see another group of 2. And I see another group of 2. Because my index is 2, I'm breaking everything up into groups of 2. Now, every time I've got a group of 2, I can actually bring that out of the radical. There's a group of 2 that's going to come out. There's a group of 2 that's going to come out. There's a group of 2 that's going to come out. So I got one group of 2s. So I just put one 2. One number for each group. I got a group of 3s, so I bring out one 3. I got a group of 7s, so I bring out one 7. The square root of 1,764 is 2 times 3 times 7, so my answer ends up being 42. That is my square root. So if I were to go and list my steps, we start with prime factorization of the radicand. Then we rewrote it as a product of its factors. Next, we made groups the size of the index. So in this case, my index was 2, so I broke it up into groups of 2. And our last step, we brought out one factor for each group. Let's do one more example here. Once again, starting with the prime factorization. All right, let's rewrite it as a product of its factors. Next, we break it into groups of 2 because our index is 2. And we're going to bring out one factor for each group. So I've got a group of twos. I've got another group of twos. So I've got a group of threes. And I've got a second group of threes. My square root is 2 times 2 times 3 times 3, which is 36. And that is the square root of 1,296. Let's find a cube root of a whole number next. It's not really any different except for the index. The first step is exactly the same. Let's do a prime factorization. Let's write that out as a product of its prime factors. Next step, same thing. We're going to break it up into groups the size of the index. In this case, our index is 3, so I'm looking for groups of 3. There is a group of 3, and there's a group of 3. If I take out one factor for each group, I've got 2 times 7. So the cubed root of 2,744 is 14. Once again, the only thing that really changed is because our index was 3, we took things out in groups of 3. Let's try this one more time. Let's try the fourth root of 4,096. Once again, let's start with a prime factorization. Now that we've done our prime factorization, we're going to write it out as a product of its prime factors. Okay, got our product of our prime factors. There should be 12 of them. We're going to break it up into groups. Our index is 4, so we need to break things up into groups of 4. There's a group of 4. There's a group of 4. There's a group of 4. 
We're going to bring out one factor for each group. We are looking at two for the first group, there's a two in the second group, and there's a two in the third group. So the fourth root of 4096 is eight. Once again, the only difference is the size of the groups. And you look at the index to figure out how many numbers need to be in each group.